Hello, my name is Nate. Welcome to my Fluid Art channel. Today I'll be demonstrating how I created this painting using the Magic Dome technique. Um, in the description box below this video, uh, if you click on See More, um, I've listed all of the uh, colors that I've used. There were only two this time. Um, and as well as the hints and tips for the technique, I call it the keys to success. And if you stay to the very end, you'll see details of the, the wet and the dry results. And um, thank you very much for joining me. Enjoy. Hello everybody. So tonight I am determined to leave some negative space. <laughs> so we'll see how, um, how well I do. I am going to do a straight pour over top of this round object. I'm calling it a magic dome pour. Um, this dome is half of a uh, plastic Christmas ornament that comes apart in the middle so that you can fill it with all kinds of different Christmassy things. Um, but I'm going to pour on this half of it. I took the little tab off on this one so that I would have a, a clean edge so because that would disrupt my pattern. So I've got this um, ready to go. I painted my edges because my base coat color um, is Amsterdam's phthalo blue and it is a transparent color. So that means that um, as the paint goes over the sides, the sides could show that inner glow of the white coming through it. So, because it, because it was transparent. So, uh, to stop that from happening, I pre-painted the sides recently, which is why I have so much paint all over my hands. But it all washes off. So, um, I have that phthalo blue, and then I also have titanium white, and those are the only two colors I'm using. So, um, to get started here, I'm going to about half of this 16 ounce cup onto my canvas and prime the space. There we go, that's pretty good. The rest I'll keep in reserve in case I want to um, use it as a flow extender and I probably will. There we go. I'm just spinning that out a little bit so that the, the paint moves out onto the canvas. So now let's layer a cup. So we're going to start with uh, titanium white in the bottom and we'll start with a, slip, a small layer and then we'll do the phthalo blue again, just a small layer. And we're going to alternate back and forth. colors and not have some negative space. <laughs> I think this is a foolproof plan, but let's see if I can mess it up somehow. Okay. Nice healthy layers. And then we'll finish it. We'll finish it up with some of our base coat color, which is the same. Right, so we're going to do a straight pour. We're going to start in the middle, and as soon as the white starts showing up, I will go off into the onto the side, the front edge of that, and I will turn this canvas on my spinner as we go. So let's get started. already tell this is going to be amazing. Using a spinner like this, you're almost guaranteed to get a spiral of some sort. So I'm trying to keep my spins a little even, so it kind of enhances that effect. And as we get closer to the bottom of the cup, we'll move a little bit closer to the uh, surface of our little dome here. 
that increases the amount of feathering that comes off. Good. Nice. Now we're going to let that set and settle a little bit so we can um, uh, let that percolate. <laughs> and we are going to add some paint here. Not a lot, but I do want some flow extender here. Most of the paint has come off of that, so we're going to take that off. And we're just going to stick our skewer. This is a very thin metal skewer that I've obviously used many times. Um, I will just stick it under the lip and pull up. Beautiful. This is going to look like a hurricane, I think. So anytime that you move paint, whether you're stirring it or pouring it or using a spatula on it, spreading it out or with a hairdryer, all those different ways that we move paint, every single one of them creates air bubbles. So um, you have to use the torch to, uh, to get rid of those. And the longer you let this sit before you move it, the more of the um, air bubbles come up. So it's one of the reasons to be a little patient when you first pour, so we can um, uh, allow those air bubbles to work their way to the top. And the thinner the paints are, the quicker that happens. Okay, I'm just looking here at all the things that I like about this painting. Um, I'm reserving judgment on this first bit here, but I love that. I like this edge here also. This, holy crap. I'm going to need to save as much of that as possible. Um, so, the, uh, the parts that I like the best would be this, uh, on the outside, would be this area here, with this the least amount. So, let's take that edge off, I think, this direction. hands are sticky so I'm pulling up little pieces of paint off of my painting surface. I was hoping that would fill in just a little bit more. Can I push down and help it? Maybe. Coming in, coming in, coming in. Nice. How happy are we with that? Wow, that is so cool. All right. Let's tilt this off. So we're taking it this way. Let's come back. Like this. 
so you can see it better. And I'm going to come down this way. I want to go in a swirl here first, instead of going directly there. I'm going to open these lines up as much as possible before I go over any of the edges. So very cool. I think I'm going to come this direction next, and I'm going to leave this part up here as negative space. I think that's what we—that's the plan. I'm not sure if I'm going to come all the way over here, but I would like to open that up. But this is stretching out amazing, so we're going to come this way first. the weight of the paint back to the middle that gives me the opportunity to choose which direction to go next without warping any of the lines Okay, so here's our overhead view. There is gonna be a little bit of glare, but I think it's going to uh, work out. This is really beautiful. I'm so happy with this. Amazing what you can do with just two colors. Um, it also helps that the blue is transparent and the other color is opaque. So they play, they play so well together because they uh, are able to contrast. But Okay, so let me take you in. I'm, again, I'm going to start in the middle because 
Oh my God. Look at this. Oh, there's a little octopus right there. Do you see the octopus? Oh, so cute. Only He only has uh, five legs, but still, he's cool. Okay. Him. <laughs> uh, but as we feather out, I love that effect. Look at how many little lines are in that. So stunning to me. Little talking snakes there. <laughs> wow. Still following the uh, the spiral as it comes out. Look at that right there. That really does look like feathers. Can I get that? Oh my god. Yeah. Look at that. So pretty. Now this thalo blue will dry darker than it currently is, but all those sections where it has blended a bit with the white, that'll just make all of that stand out even more. I love how soft it is out here on the edges. Look at that. Beautiful. I love, love that. So pretty. Very, very nice. I'm really happy with the composition. Uh, I was able to save some negative space up here in the top, but because the base coat is the same as the color I used in the pour, that makes all of this negative space also. It makes a lot of this negative space also. So um, it pulls that negative space into the painting. I think it's a really cool effect. Um, the only thing I have, the only thing I was considering with the uh, composition was whether or not to keep this edge of the spiral. I was wondering if I took it off, if it would still be obvious that it continued off, can off the page and then back on again. Uh, I think it would have, but I'm also glad that I kept as much of the spiral together. I, th I think it looks pretty cool. Almost like a seed hatching or something like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun to do. And um, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And um, uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and um, come back and see me sometime. Thanks again.